Hey, Vertassium, I'd like to reply to your uh, recent video, Energy Doesn't Flow in the Wires. Great video, but I wanted to reply. Never have replied before. Um, a little background of who I am is I was introduced to you actually by my students. They came in with a video and said, hey, have you seen this? And this was way back in 2013, and it was the Science of Jetpacks. And at the timestamp of one minute and 43 seconds, you had a video of actually me, me in my classroom. And I was riding across on my um, uh, jet-powered <laughs> fire extinguisher that, that, that we had built. And uh, you were obviously making a video on that. So uh, somehow you came across my video and you clipped it and added it in and I, I found it quite entertaining. Uh, but since that day, I've been following you. And uh, like all your, your videos and even this latest one, Energy Doesn't Flow in the Wires, I love it, but you've got one very, very serious fatal flaw in it. And uh, I think you probably kind of expected that given uh, the way you ended the uh, video compared to your other ones. You knew there would be a lot of pushback and, and, and feedback. Uh, let me tell you what I think is the uh, fatal flaw. I think everything you said was uh, really good uh, about the energy not being in the wires but being in the field. I think you talked well about the pointing vector. Uh, all of that was great teaching, but I do think you got your e &M fields a little bit mixed up at the end. Let me explain. You show in your video uh, a situation that looks like this. You show a power supply uh, with the switch and then the light bulb way at the end. And so let me call this the long slender rectangle. And then you say, let's look at the electromagnetic field. And you say, okay, so this across the top would be charged up positive. This across the bottom would be charged up negative. And as a result of that, you would have an electric field that would go from the top to the bottom. Totally agree. Uh, you also say then because of the current, you would have then a magnetic field. And so you make this little loop here and point it uh, down and the current goes through the light bulb. And then you say it goes across uh, like this. And, and then you get to, of course, the famous pointing vector. Uh, the pointing vector would be the electric field cross the magnetic field. And you say, okay, if you look in this particular category, you have E going down, B going in. If I take my right hand and I do E cross B, I get then a pointing vector, which I'll do in red, flowing this way. And so this is the pointing vector. Uh, pointing, no T. The pointing uh, vector. No, no, that looks right. Pointing vector. Uh, and then over here, if you do that same thing, E going down, B going in, and so you would get this E cross B, and you would get the pointing vector this way. So the energy flows kind of on the inside of the wire out to the light. T totally agree with that. And uh, that all sounded great. The energy stored in the field, uh, the energy actually flows according to the pointing vector. Uh, this long, skinny rectangle would mean that the time it takes for the light bulb go to go on, if this was some length d, uh, it would travel roughly the speed of light. There'd be a little bit of other effects, but uh, over t, and so you would have distance over time, and so it would depend on how far the light bulb was away. But here's where you made, I think, a fatal mistake. You then hooked up a circuit that really didn't match this. You hooked up a circuit that looked like this. You had your power supply, you had your switch, and you arced the wires out a long way and only a meter up before it came back to the light bulb. And same thing here. And the wires were 300 kilometers long, excuse me, 300,000 kilometers long. And you closed the switch. And you asked how much time would it take. And you said that the time, which would be distance 
uh, distance over speed, you gave it a distance of one meter and the speed of light and said that would be the answer. Well, that would be true only if the energy actually flowed from the battery to the light. And of course, when you built this long and skinny rectangle, that was true. It flowed basically from the battery out perpendicular towards here. But when you hook up the wires this way, I'll call it a short, fat rectangle, there's a very different set of magnetic fields. And in this case, this wire would be positive all the way around. And this wire would be negative all the way around. And our electric field then would look something more like this. It would be outward from the wires. And inward towards these wires. Now, your magnetic field, again, would be curling around and going in to the paper down here on the orange part, looping around, and the magnetic field would be going in and in. And so if we do our pointing vector, which is the flow of the energy, E cross B over here, uh, on the outside of the wire, remember E is down and B is in, so E cross B would make a pointing vector that would be flowing along the outside edge of the wire, and it would have to flow a complete 300,000 kilometers before getting to the light bulb. It doesn't just flow one meter across. And so when you say, what time does it take? And you take distance and divide it by speed. The distance is the 300 kilometers and the speed of light is the 300,000 kilometers per second and you get one second. And so this light bulb's not going to go on for a full second. You know your distance is one meter away. That is not the flow of energy. Now, on the other side, you can kind of see the, the same thing. Uh, if we take the current that would flow this way, it would make a, fe a magnetic field that comes out and arcs around, out and arcs around, comes around here and arcs around. But again, if we do the pointing vector for the direction of the flow of energy, it's actually right here. E is up and B is down. E cross B is on the outside of the wire. And the energy then is just on the outside surface of the wire flowing the 300,000 kilometers. So, yeah, the energy flows both ways, just like you did in this long, skinny rectangle. But it is actually then in this short, fat one flowing along the wires. And it has to travel a distance of 300,000 kilometers and that's where I think you make your fatal mistake. So the time is not just a simple one meter over the speed of light. It actually is 300,000 kilometers as it flows, not the one meter, but along the surface, outside surface of the wires. That's my response.